Peace. This is Damon Stith, president of HAMA, Historical African Martial Arts Association and founder of Guild of the Silent Sword. In this video, we will explore and map out the various kingdoms, states, and empires that dominated the continent during the Middle Ages. North Africa is probably one of the most well-documented regions of Africa in regards to ancient and medieval history. The most well-known civilizations would be that of ancient Egypt, Kush, and Carthage, and to a lesser extent, the kingdoms of the Gadamantes and the Numidians. Here's a list of kingdoms in medieval North Africa. In modern day Algeria, there was the Beni Afrin dynasty founded by Zenata Burfers. In the 8th century, they established a kingdom in central Algeria with Timosin as its capital. The Beni Afrin resisted the Romans, Vandals, Byzantians, and Arabs, siding with the warrior queen. Kahina al Diya, who led the resistance against the Arab invasion. Other dynasties in the region were the Zirad, the Fatimid, and the Hamidid. In Morocco, a number of kingdoms and dynasties rose, but two of the most famous were the Almoravids and the Almohads. Both dynasties ruled on two shores, Moorish Spain and in Africa. The Almoravids, or people of the Ribat, came into power in 1061 CE and fell in 1145. Their rule was followed by the Almohads, who ruled from 1145 to 1244. In Tunisia, there were the Zirads, a Sanhaja Berber dynasty founded by the descendants of Ziri ibn Manad, a military leader of the Cairo-based Fatimid Caliphate. The Zirats were emirs who ruled in the name of the Fatimids, but gradually established their own autonomy in Ifriqiya through military conquests until officially breaking with the Fatimids in the mid 11th century. Medieval Egypt was dominated by three major dynasties, namely the Fatimids, the Ayyubids, and the Mamluks. East Africa was the nexus point for many cultures, serving as a hub for commerce and trade between inner Africa, Asia, and the Eastern Mediterranean world since antiquity. Goods like ivory, gold, ebony, incense, and slaves traveled from south to north and across the seas connecting Africa with Arabia, Persia, India, and China. Christian Nubia. After the destruction of the ancient kingdom of Meroe, in 325 CE, the Nile Valley experienced a power vacuum that was soon filled by three new kingdoms, Nobatia, Makuria, and Alodia. The northernmost of these kingdoms was Nobatia, formed in around 400 CE. Nobatia gradually expanded by defeating the Blamese in the north and incorporating the territory between the second and third cataract in the south. This was accomplished during the reign of King Silko, who established his capital in Pacharas, modern-day Faras. In 543 CE, the kingdom adopted Coptic Christianity as its state religion. Sometime in the 7th century, Novatia would be annexed by his southern neighbor, Makuria. To the south of Novatia was the kingdom of Makuria, known also as Datowa or Dongola after its capital. At the end of the 6th century, it converted to Christianity. In 651 CE, Makuria repulsed an Arab invasion and signed a peace treaty called a Bact, which negotiated favorable trade terms and reassured peace between the two peoples. This peace treaty lasted up until the 13th century. From 750 to 1150, the kingdom was stable and prosperous but continued Egyptian aggression and internal strife would lead to the kingdom's collapse in the 11th century. Alodia or Alwa, the third and southernmost kingdom of the three states and perhaps the oldest, its capital Soba was located near the modern day city of Khartoum at the confluence of the White and Blue Nile. The kingdom was formed sometime around 350 CE it was first mentioned as early as 565 CE and reached its peak from the 9th century to the 12th century. 
Of the three kingdoms, it was the last to convert to Christianity in 580 CE. Soba, the capital city, is described as a town of extensive dwellings, churches of gold, and garden. Soba also prospered as a trading hub, receiving goods from Mercuria, the Middle East, India, China, and West Africa. From the 12th to the 13th century, Alodia began to decline due to a number of factors, such as southern invasion, drought, and a shift in the trade routes. In the 14th century, the kingdom was ravaged by a plague while Arab tribes began to migrate into the upper Nile Valley around 1500 CE. The Fun Sultanate and the Fall of Christian Nubia Weakened from internal strife and plague and isolated from the Christian world, Soba, the capital of Alodia, was overrun by Abdullah Arabs who had migrated into the region. The Arab victory would be short-lived. The Funj entered into the Nile Valley, led by Amara Dungas, defeated the Abdullah, filling the void created by Alodia's fall and becoming the first king of Sinar, ruling from 1503 to 1534. Through statecraft and diplomacy, he managed to halt the Ottoman encroachment after the fall of Egypt in 1510 CE. The kingdom of Sinar would reach its height in the 17th century. Aksum. The city of Aksum was founded around 400 BCE, according to legends contained in the book, the Kabra Nagas, the Glory of Kings. The kingdom was founded by the son of King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba. Scholars attribute the early foundation of Aksum to interactions between indigenous groups such as the Damut with Sabian immigrants from Yemen. By 100 CE, Aksum began to rise in power and expand its influence, reaching its peak in 350 CE. Under the leadership of King Ezana, Aksum rose to new heights, ruling from 325 CE to 360. Aksum expanded its territory and became a major trade center. At the onset of his reign, King Ezania conquered the kingdom of Kush, destroying his capital of Meroe and erecting the Izana stone commemorating his victory. Izana also introduced Christianity as the state religion and converted to the fate early in his reign. Aksum would continue to rule into 940 CE when it was conquered by Queen Yodit. In the 10th century CE, the already weakened kingdom of Aksum suffered its final defeat at the hands of a fierce warrior queen named Yodit. The origins of this queen is shrouded in mystery and legend. In some accounts, she is a Jewish or pagan queen ruling from the Simeon Mountains or in some area to the south like Damot. In other accounts, she is closely connected to the Aksumite royalty. And then there are stories that say she was a young woman that was abused by a bishop and started her war against the church in order to attain justice. We may never know the historical Yodit but various accounts attest to a non-Christian queen ruling Ethiopia in the 10th century and destroying churches and other Christian monuments. She is said to have ruled Ethiopia for 40 years, paving the way for a new dynasty. The Zagwe held from Beguana, the historical name of the Lasta province, and ruled from the city of Lalabella. The dynasty was founded by King Mara Takla Hemanat who overthrew the last of Yodis dynasty in 1137 CE and married the daughter of the last Aksumite king, making the Zagwe technically part of the Solomonic dynasty. The Zagwe dynasty did much to celebrate and venerate Christian faith in Ethiopia. But it's during the reign of the Zagwe's most famous king, Lalebela, that we see an increase in buildings of stele, monuments, and most notably, the 11 churches carved from living stone. Lalebela means the bees recognize his rule. And according to legend, this is due to a swarm of bees that surrounded him when he was born. He is also attributed with building the city of, city of Lalebela based on a vision he had of Jerusalem. King Lalebela would rule from 1162 CE to 1221, abdicating the throne in favor of his nephew, ruled for 18 months, before being ousted by Lalabella's son, Get Barak. In 1270 CE, the Zagwe dynasty would be overthrown by Yakuna Amlak, 
the scion of the last Aksumite king. Tradition states that Yakuna Amlak was imprisoned by Yetbarak and managed to escape and gather support from the Amhara provinces as well as from the Sultanate Ashua. Together these forces defeated Yetbarak's army, bringing an end to the Zagwe dynasty and reinstating the former Solomonids to power, who would rule Ethiopia until 1974, ending in the reign of King Haile Selassie. West Africa in ancient times was occupied by a number of complex cultures that left their mark on the region and disappeared in the sands of time, only to be discovered centuries later. In the southwest region of modern-day Mauritania are the ruins of one of the oldest stone-building cultures found in Africa south of the Sahara. The site is referred to as Dar Tihit or Tihitwalata, consisting of over 500 settlements with well-laid-out streets and fortified compounds and is said to have been created by an agro-pastoral population, possibly the Songhai, who occupied those settlements from 2000 BCE to 300 BCE. The ruins bring to mind the legendary city of Wagadu, which was brought to ruin and disappeared into the sands only to be revealed in another time. Wagadu was also the name of the first centralized power in the region, known more commonly as the Empire of Ghana. The origins of Ghana are shrouded in myth and mystery, but are connected to the hero Dinga, who according to legend unified the people and fought against the goblins that controlled the land. Eventually, Dinga defeated their king and married his three daughters, creating the three royal families of the Soninke people. Ghana appears to have grown into power by 300 CE, benefiting from its position between the Mediterranean markets in the north and the gold producing regions in the south. The introduction of the domesticated camel allowed them to capitalize on ancient trade routes and by, seven, and by the seventh century the camel has successfully connected the western Sahel with the markets of Morocco. Some scholars believe that Ghana's fall was due to an invasion by the Almoravids, while others see the empire's decline as gradual based on archaeology. The legends of Wagadu might offer some insight on the subject. In the legend, the city of Wagadu was protected by a serpent that rains down gold once a year for a sacrifice of a young maiden. This sacrifice is said to be the source of power and wealth for Wagadu for generations. When the hero's betrothed is chosen to be sacrificed, he kills the serpent, thus bringing down a curse of drought, loss of gold, and dispersion upon his people. Perhaps those real-world reasons account for the waning power of the Soninke. The Empire of Mali was founded by the legendary Lion King Sundiata Keita, who spent the majority of his youth as a crippled and despised son of King Megan Kanfata. When the king died, the throne was passed to Sundiata, but the council chose his younger half-brother instead, forcing the young prince, his mother, and his siblings into exile. While searching for a place to call home, Sundiata made allies and friends with several of the princes he encountered on his journeys. Eventually, he reached the kingdom of Mimma, and it was there the young prince grew into warriorhood as the guest of the king. While in exile, his homeland was being conquered by the king of the Soso, Sumangoru. The people of Mali begged him to liberate them from the tyranny of Sumangoru, and eventually Sundiata answers the call and rallies an army from amongst his allies and defeats Sumangoru in the Battle of Karina Do. After swearing their allegiance to Sundiata, the princes are given lordship over their lands and are sent to expand the borders of this new empire. Mali. Sundiata ruled Mali from 1214 CE to 1255, but the empire would reach its height under the reign of Mansa Musa, who came into power in 1307 after Mali endured a period of civil war. He ruled the kingdom for 30 years and made Mali famous after his legendary Hajj to Mecca, crossing the Sahara with 60,000 men, 12,000 slaves carrying gold bars weighing 4 pounds and 80 camels carrying 50 to 300 pounds of gold dust. According to accounts, he was very generous, giving out gold to the poor and building a mosque every Friday. 
When he reached Cairo, he became friends with the Mamluk Sultan, who recognized him as a caliph of the Sudan. Mansa Musa's generosity caused the gold price to inflate in Egypt, which took 12 years to recover. On his Hajj, Mansa Musa networked with artisans, architects, religious scholars, and other learned men in order to bring their skills and trades back to Mali. During his return home, he received word that one of his generals had captured Gao, a trade city controlled by the Songhai people who had recently broken away from the empire. Mansa Musa stopped in Gao and took hostage the two sons of the king of Gao and raised them in Mali. Mansa Musa commissioned many great projects such as the transformation of the Sankori Mosque into a full-time university of Islamic studies with over 1 million manuscripts and the ability to house 25,000 students. As a devout Muslim, he did many things to solidify Islam as the religion of the nobility while respecting the traditional beliefs of his people. After his death in 1337 CE, his son Megan assumed the throne and ruled for only four years before the throne was succeeded by his uncle, Suleiman Keita. Suleiman proved to be a good and capable leader, even though he was unpopular and faced a number of setbacks, such as a conspiracy to be overthrown by the queen and her generals and constant raids in their western territories. The king managed to circumvent these obstacles and continued to guide Mali forward. After his reign, the empire would slowly dwindle in power, never to reach its former glory, yet and still remain intact as a kingdom up into the 15th century. With the death of Mansa Musa and the ascension, and the ascension of Mansa Megan, the two Songhai princes, Ali Kolon and Suleiman Nar, Suleiman Nar, took advantage of the chaos and fled to their homeland. Upon learning about their father's death, Ali Kolon took control of the throne, ousting the current leader and declaring Gao independent from Mali. This moment in time marks the eventual rise of the third great Sahelian power, Songhai. As Mali's power waned, the Songhai began to expand its territory, reaching its height under the reigns of Sunni Ali Bear in 1464 and Askia Muhammad Touré in 1493. These two rulers would expand the borders of Songhai, making it into the largest land empire in Africa, reaching from the Atlantic in the west and the borders of Hausaland in the east. Sunni Ali was constantly at war, riding from the ends of his empire, fighting against the Tuareg in the north and the Mosi in the south. One of his greatest military achievements was the capture of the city of Jinnah, a popular center city, a popular center of commerce and learning that had never been taken in battle. Sunni Ali lay siege to the city for seven months and seven days. The city surrendered when its ruler died and Sunni Ali married his widow and peace was restored. For all his conquest, Sunni Ali's death would be a matter of conjecture. On one hand, a historical account states he drowned while crossing the Niger River after a campaign, while others believe that his nephew, General Muhammad Touré, had betrayed him. Muhammad Touré took up arms against Sunni Bada, son of Sunni Ali, and ousted him from the throne, earning him the title Askia, meaning usurper. usurper. Both Sunni Ali and Askia Muhammad brought new administrative techniques into the empire. While Sunni Ali was a nominal Muslim at best, Askia Muhammad worked hard to strengthen Islam in the empire, building mosques, hiring Islamic scholars and jurists to better govern the empire, as well as patronizing the scholars of Timbuktu, Gao, and Jinni. Following the footsteps of the great Muslim king Mansa Musa, Askia Muhammad performed the Hajj to Mecca, stopping in Cairo to meet with the Sultan and receiving a gift of the sword and the Quran as symbols that he was the caliph of the Sudan. During Muhammad, uh, excuse me, during Askia Muhammad's reign, Songhai was at its height of power. Eventually, the king abdicated the throne for his son. And what followed was a slow, agonizing decline with a series of weak leaders and internal strife. 
power of Songhai was greatly diminished, making them susceptible to invasion, which occurred in March 13, 1591, at the hands of the Moroccan army, bringing an end to the Empire of Songhai. The Mosi Empire was a collection of kingdoms that occupied the upper Volta River systems of modern-day Burkina Faso. According to legends, the ancestors of the Mosi arrived in the area from the east perhaps in the 13th century when we see an emergence of the centralization of power and military of political and military powers. Unlike their forest-bound eastern and southern neighbors, the Mosi had access to horses from northern trade and would develop the use of long-ranging light cavalry which enabled them to harass neighboring powers of Mali and Songhai. These kingdoms would constantly vie for control of the Middle Niger. As the Mosi increased in power, the conflict with his neighbor, neighbors intensified. The Kingdom of Yatenga led a full-scale invasion going head-to-head -head with regional superpower of the time, Songhai. The Mosi conquered the city of Timbuktu and sacked Masina, a major trading city. In 1497, the Emperor of Songhai, Askia Muhammad, declared a holy war against the Mosi and eventually defeated them and halted their northward push. Though defeated, the Mosi vehemently refused to be converted to Islam, and after Songhai's defeat at the hands of the Moroccans in 1591, they reasserted their independence into the coming of the French in the 19th century. The house estates developed in the lands between the Niger River and Lake Chad and was a collection of independent city-states that shared the same language, culture, and ethnic identity. According to the to tradition, the founder of the house estates arrived from the east and found that the land was terrorized by a giant serpent. The hero slew this serpent, married the local royal family, and his offsprings founded the seven true-born house estates. Biram, Dara, Gobir, Kano, Katsina, Rano, and Zaria. The house estates were first mentioned by Jacobi in the 9th century, and by the 14th century, Kano had become the premier state as well as the base for trans-Saharan trade in salt, cloth, leather, and grain. By the 15th century, the house estates were vibrant trading centers exporting slaves, leather, gold, cloth, salt, kola nut, hides, and henna, eventually competing with their more powerful neighbors, Canaan Bornu and the Mali Empire. In the 11th century, the Hausa would be united for the first time under the rule of Amina, warrior queen of Zazu, who rode into battle at the head of an army never to have been defeated. She would unite the Hausa states into one kingdom and introduce many reforms such as walled cities, cowrie shells for currency, and body armor for her elite cavalry. She ruled as queen of Zazu for 40 years. After her death, that unity dissolved. Rivalries between the states led to periods of domination by major powers such as Songhai and Canaan Bornu. In the country of Nigeria, a brilliant Iron Age society referred to as the Nok flourished from 15 BCE to 500 CE. The civilization created complex urban centers, impressive nearly life-size nearly life-size terracotta statues and were said to have developed the use of iron independently around 11 BCE and by 550 BCE they were smelting iron tools. Around 6th century CE the Nog civilization disappeared giving way to another culture that was spread throughout the land a century or two later. According to legends of the Yoruba people the founder and first king of Ife was Ododua, a divine being who had assisted in the creation of the world and humanity. The first being to descend from the sky to the earth at the very spot where Ife was built. From that sacred site, the children and grandchildren of Odudua spread out throughout the land and founded their own kingdoms and states. Two of the most powerful states, Oyo and Benin, were founded by the grandson of Odudua Oranmian. Benin. The kingdom of Benin was one of the oldest and most highly developed states in the coastal hinterlands of West Africa. According to legend, 
the city was founded by the wandering prince Oranmian, grandson of Oladua, who was sent on an impossible mission to conquer the land and build more towns for the glory of Ifa. With this cavalry, Oranmian ventured south into the forest lands and fought and subdued the indigenous inhabitants there. Oremian found that ruling the land was very difficult for a foreigner and eventually departed the land in which he called Ile Ibinu, meaning land of vexation, which eventually was corrupted into Benin. The land of Benin was occupied by a culture that was partially agricultural in the first century BCE, and by 500 CE, when iron was in use, the inhabitants of Benin practiced agriculture full time. The kingdom was founded in the 11th century CE and reached its golden age during the reign of King Ewuade in 1440 CE. The king introduced a number of reforms that centralized the government and strengthened the military and enabled them to bring in more territory under their control. For 200 years, Benin was very successful, but in the 16th century, the kings, excuse me, in the 1600s, the kings started to lose control of their people and by the 1800s, Benin was no longer unified. The kingdom came to a sudden end in 1897 when a British army invaded and made it part of the British Empire. Oyo. The kingdom of Oyo was founded by Oranmian, the first king and grandson of Odudua. The kingdom of Oyo came into power sometime in the 7th century and would dominate its neighbors into the 18th century. The secret of Oyo's strength lay in its mastery of the horse. Being in the savanna enabled them to develop a sophisticated cavalry wing based on Sahelian models while their neighbors who occupied the forest zones were unable to create or sustain cavalry. Oyo reached its height in the 14th century and then suffered a number, a number of military setbacks by the Nup, a powerful kingdom to the east who would eventually conquer Oyo and destroy the capital of the capital city of Oyo Ile in 1535. The royal family fled to nearby kingdom of Borgu. That concludes our journey into uh, medieval Africa. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more updates and more in-depth look into medieval Africa. I'm Damon Stith. President of Hama Historical African Martial Arts and founder of Guild of the Silent Sword. Thank you for being here.